we'll get into the starter now if we want to start the rock, paper, scissors for who wants to go first. Um, we've got two options for starters. Now when I first started here many moons ago, I always preferred this one piece deal. It's the starter with the drip edge built into it. It's all one rolled piece of metal, rolled and folded uh, piece of metal. My thought process was bulletproof, right? You put it on there, no way snow and ice is ever gonna back up through your gutters, perfect. And it does all that. The problem is it's also a very rigid piece. And it's not like an aluminum drip edge where you can kind of suck it in where you need to and, and make it fit. So when you get into these older homes where your, your eave lines are snaked like this here, you know, you may be touching here, it's going to be floating there, it's not going to be touching there, it'll be touching back on the other end. Um, and it's, it's pretty critical to make sure you've got a nice straight line when you're starting this roof. Because again, unlike comp shingles, you can't choke up courses. You set that first row, and everyone hooks and locks into that, and that's where it goes. So if you're crooked to start, it's going to be crooked when you get up into the field. And sometimes it even works out where it gets exponentially worse as you go up. Um, so having a straight start is, is pretty critical. Over the years, through that hard learned experience, I've kind of transitioned to the other style, the other method, which is going to be running your perimeters with a standard drip edge, you know, whichever width that you like, uh, whether it's a straight square edge or uh, with an actual drip on it. Now we can take, we've got our drip edge on, we can kind of put a tape on. Some guys will even pull down from the ridge so you know when you get to your ridge course, you're gonna be at least square and level with your ridge line, even if your eave's off a little bit. Um, snap a straight line, we'll run a butyl tape or a sealant right where our screws are gonna go on the back side here. Set this to our nice straight starter and use that. And we know we got a good straight line, we got a good solid seal, and we're ready to go. And this gives you a little bit of play as far as where it actually needs to sit. If you're running with a, a slate roof and you have a black drip edge, whatever little bit of black, if you happen to be off like this here, it's going to kind of just get naturally shadowed out so you're not going to see it. Okay? So one option for you. The other option, I think it's kind of tough to do for me anyway, but I've seen guys that will take their drip edge and actually tuck it inside of here. So you're kind of doing the same thing. You can open up this lip, tuck your drip edge inside, screw down through it. Um, but because drip edge is 10 foot usually, and this is six and a half, you kind of start making a bunch of pieces. So to me, that's more work, uh, but whatever works for you. So these are the screws that we use, okay? We've got two different kinds. We've got, they're all the same style screw, but some of them have painted heads, some don't. Okay, so with the Shingle XD, everything's going to be completely concealed. It's just going to be, the, the head's going to be the same color as the shank. Uh, when we get into the Shake XD, most of the screws are concealed with that system, but the hip and ridge caps are actually going to have exposed fasteners. So you'll see, like on the brown, for example, it's going to be a brown or a blackish screw. But in the field, make sure you're not using painted screws on your accessories, because these are about... I want to say about eight times more expensive than just the plain screws. Um, so not only is it going to cost a lot, somebody a lot of money, uh, but when you get to your caps at the end and you need them, you're not going to have them. And then you're going to be on hold for your job to finish while you order some more. Now I like to, when I'm making some of my accessory cuts, I like to just carry some red and green snips. I recently switched over to offsets because I find it a little bit easier to get through with some of the panel stuff, but the accessories kind of doesn't matter. I mean, whichever you like to use, go for it. Uh, so we, we're going to want to bring this all the way in just like we would run in drip edge on a roof. Really no different. We can do the same thing on the ends. We'll wrap it right around the corner. So the way that I cut this, in, and one of the reasons why I use reds and greens is because depending on what you're using, it's going to snip the metal up one way or the other. Uh, so it works pretty good. If we wanted to clean up this edge, I'll just take this piece, kind of fold it, whoop, snip it, can line this all up, right? Kind of let the tool do a lot of the work. Fold it into here and cut it. 
And now a couple little pens, it kind of gets it back clean. If we were going to cut off this side of it, you know, I'd get, I use the greens on the last side because we're cutting from the other side. If I cut with my reds here, it's going to peel the metal up this way and make it easier to work instead of binding up on the other side. One thing that I'll do, if I wanted to just get rid of this lock, like if we were running a long stretch, we want to overlap these two drip edges. So I'll take this, I'll snip it up and down the back side. And you got a utility knife kicking around. Yep. So now I'll take and I'll just put a couple scores right back through here. And now that'll just pop right off. Okay, so now you got a nice smooth edge. If I tried cutting across this little seam with my snips, it would make a real jagged, ugly edge that you can get cut on. It's also not going to let your piece lay real flat, so you'll have to come back and kind of beat it flat with a hammer. Uh, but the utility knife for me works really well. I like to get my inside set like this here. We'll drop a little piece of valley metal in. I can make a quick mark, quick mark, snip it, score it, and just snap it right off. I like having it installed for me. Some guys like to do it differently, but for me, I like to have it installed. That way the roof's holding it in place when I'm running a utility knife on it, not holding it in my hand, doing all this, okay? And you slip it on the ladder because you have tension, have tension, it slips and you lose your balance. Um, so I like to have it in place and just score it, peel it off. For me, it's safer. Everybody learns their own techniques of what works, but that works for me. Look pretty good for first timers. We're gonna roll with it for now. I'll get a rake channel, I'll get you a valley metal. We can start cutting this way to put, slip in a piece. 